In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, with the grace of God, we accomplished the mystery of the Holy Unction. The Holy Unction is one of the oldest mysteries of Christ and of course of our Orthodox Church. But unfortunately, many of our Christians, they don't know actually the meaning and the benefits of this holy mystery. Some people, when they hear about the holy unction, they get scared. Oh, I'm going to die? So, if you heard the prayers, in all the prayers, we are asking for help and for the forgiveness of sins. Nothing else. Doesn't say in any, any of these prayers that somebody is going to die. To, to die, you know, to die. But for some reason, reason, some Christians associate this mystery of the, with the departure. But mainly, if we listen to the prayers, he's talking about the forgiveness of sins. He's talking about the repentance and health of soul and body. So this is what we are asking, and we are seeing in one of the Gospels that we read tonight, when the Samaritan found that poor man that had fallen into the, the hands of the thieves and they had beaten him and left him almost dead what the good Samaritan put on him oil and wine so you see these two things that we are using a lot in church the wine for the Holy Communion and the oil, the oil itself is being used from the ancient times for different and various situations. Even the athletes in the ancient Greece, when they were playing the Olymp Olympics games, they were putting oil upon their entire body, from head to the end of their legs because that was helping them somehow uh, first of all uh, not to to sweat so much and secondly uh, they were very slippery and it was easier to get the way so the kings, they were anointed with the olive oil. The prophets were anointed with the olive oil. So you see, and after the flood, the dove, what brought in its twig? The, a branch from the olive tree. So you see the symbol of the olive oil goes deep in, and has its roots deep in the Old Testament. So, and uh, as the water which we are blessing is being transformed through the prayer, or the water in which we are getting baptized, it's not just a simple water anymore, but it's being transformed with the grace of God. So the olive oil that we are bringing and putting on the, this table to use it, we are reading all these prayers and asking God to transform and make it a medicine for healing of soul and body. So it has a different approach. So it's not just the oil that we cook in the kitchen but it's 
a spiritual <coughs> medicine. It's a spiritual boost for soul and body. And we are using seven candles which are representing the seven mysteries and the seven gifts of God. And also, uh, in the oil, in the lamp, it's a little bit of wine. It's a mixture of wine and oil. So, which what did the Good Samaritan with that fellow that had fallen into the hands of the thieves? And also, the flower. In the ancient times, in the city of Jerusalem, when James, the brother of Christ, was the bishop, they were usually, actually was uh, using the actual wick, not the flower. The flower is a new thing, but because the wick represents the resurrection, that's why they were using. And that's the reason this flower, it's to be used only for the and either, or only for the prosperous, to make prosperous from it. Because that's, that's the reason we are putting it and using it there. It's the representation again of the resurrection. <clears throat> so, and of course, throughout the, the years, those that assisted to this holy mystery of Christ, Either you personally or someone in your family received the grace of God through this, through the anointing of, of this holy oil. So many miracles had happened throughout the years when people were anointed with this holy oil. <clears throat> And that's, that's the reason. So you see, it does only good. But don't think that it's, it's something magic it, ha it happens. No. As we heard from the Gospel, what it says, let it be according to your faith. And this, it's usually a family prayer, a family mystery, because we are getting all together. And we are praying, uniting our prayers all together and praying for each other. And this is not a mystery that can be done only in the church. It can be done at home, it can be done in the hospital. Whatever it is needed, we can perform this mystery. In, again, in the first centuries of the Christian church, they were doing, the holy action was actually part of the divine liturgy. So, but with the years, because it was so long, if you take in consideration Orthros, the hours, the divine liturgy, it's already five hours, plus Holy unction two and a half, so it's seven hours and a half, eight hours. So they decided to actually separate these two services, the divine liturgy, the divine liturgy, to be separated from the holy unction and to be held separate. And uh, that's the reason you see that in the middle. Well, like when we are reading the canon, we give just the blessing. But when we start the actual mystery, we are giving the blessing as a the liturgy. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, which makes this a separate service and a separate mystery. It's one of the seven, seven mysteries of the church. <coughs> so, and... Some, some churches, some parishes, they are doing it only during the Holy Week, the Holy Wednesday. Uh, I'm not saying that it's, it's wrong, but Holy Action can be 
performed at any time. It's preferable to be a fasting period or fasting day, either Wednesday or Friday, uh, because it, it is better for us to understand that uh, starvation is an awakening of our mind, of the new, right? Remember the prodigal son. The starvation make him to come back to his sense, to realize that, wait, wait a minute, I was doing so good in my father's house, and now I'm starving here, I got to enjoy the pig's food, and not even that, I'm not allowed to, to, eat, to eat even that. So, pretty much engage with the demons, and eating their, their food, what good that, does that to me? So you see, starvation brought him to himself. So, and that's why the Holy Fathers decided to put this period of fasting for us, because while we are fasting correctly, starving a little bit ourselves, then we are coming to realize actually how rich and how bad we are and how, how much work we have on ourselves to improve ourselves to imitate Christ. You know, when you're full of food and wine and whatever it is, whatever each one likes to drink, you just lay on the bed, watch TV, listen to music or whatever uh, best show you like and you have no time to think of repentance and definitely God. Oh, okay, he's there. I'll get when I'll get older. I'll think about that. Now I'm young. I have everything in, in front of me. I'll do everything I want, right? Well, it doesn't work like that because no one knows the day nor the hour of his end. So that's why we have to be prepared at all times. So it is foolish from our side to think that oh, I'll get older, then I will go to church, then I will confess, and, and so on and so forth. No. We have to live every day, and each day as is our last day. So imagine if you knew that today is your last day on earth. How would you live that day? Probably you will make, make peace with everybody, right? You will try to please everybody, to do your best, to do good to everyone. So this is how we have to live every day, as it is our last day on earth. Because we don't know when it is. That's why we have to be at all times prepared and ready, no matter what. Because we are hearing, oh, these things are happening. We are seeing the signs uh, of that the it, it's, it's approaching the second coming. We are living the revelations. Yes, that, all of that is true. But some, oh, when the, the third world, world is uh, starting, when is going to happen that? When is going to happen? Well, the thing is, be ready, spiritually. Prepare yourself, prepare your soul to meet the Lord. Doesn't matter when it's going to happen. What all that matters is going, how it's going to find us. If he's going to find us unprepared, what good that, that does to us? Nothing. So let, let, let us prepare ourselves spiritually. Let us get ready to meet the Lord, our God, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen.